the flexible path, I think, was a really good piece of work. I, I, it was in no sense my idea, but when I came to fully understand it, I fell in love with it. And once you come to understand it, the logic behind it becomes just irresistible. But it's, it's not a bumper sticker argument. So sometimes the, the people who are, are sort of want to go a whole hog to a planetary surface, I think, uh, accidentally or purposefully misrepresent what flexible path is all about. The short form of it is this. It, when you want to go to a planetary surface, you know, you need a couple of big expensive pieces to do that. You need whatever booster you're going to use, and you need some kind of capsule, you know, crew transport vehicle, call it what you will, I'll just call it a capsule for short. And you need the planetary lander, you know, uh, which is a fairly complicated system. Uh, and you need um, surface systems, whatever it is you're going to do when you get to, for example, the moon. When you're going to a low-gravity location, a low-gravity body or a, an open point in space, you only need the booster, the capsule, and some kind of habitation system because those are usually longer missions. That's kind of the point of the missions is they're longer. Now, the surface systems and the transport hab are cheap compared to everything else. The big chunks, budget-wise, are the booster, the capsule, and the lander. In a, in a realistic future scenario, NASA's budget is not going to double for a few years while we go through the development and then have again. Uh, it's going to stay, you know, maybe it's a little bigger, maybe it's a little smaller, but it's not going to go through these wild gyrations. So if you try to develop all three really expensive pieces at the same time, what you wind up doing is starving their development budget so all of them get stretched out and cost a fortune. If instead you develop them in series, you can develop the capsule and the booster first and then the lander. Now, if you do that, it turns out because you're not stretching the developments out so much, which is a very expensive way to manage your budget, you can get the, the, all three pieces at almost the same time by doing them sequentially as you would if you did them in parallel. But if you do them sequentially and you do the booster and the capsule first, you get four, five, six, seven years in which you can do exploration work with that system while you're working on the lander. So the choice is not one of, do we or don't we go to the moon? That's a completely false choice. The choice is, do we structure the program for the same money in a way in which, in addition to going back to the moon, we get asteroids, Lagrange points, maybe a Mars flyby, we build up deep space experience that we're going to need for Mars, instead of waiting 20 years and hoping that the public's enthusiasm can be sustained. <laughs> 